Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. I'm continuing my series on card layouts, and today we're going to make a smaller card, but it's a square. Four and a quarter by four and a quarter when it's folded, and I'm using the Healing Hugs stamp set. Here's the layout for today's card. And just like I've done before, I've got several other samples to share with you during today's video. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. To make sure you don't miss my live events or any of the videos that I'll be uploading, make sure you click that small bell icon that's next to the subscribe button. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. Here's a close-up of the card I'm going to be demonstrating for you, but like I said, make sure you stay with me to the end of the video so that you can see the other cards as well. I'm starting with a piece of designer series paper. This is from the Woven Threads designer series paper. Double-sided, like almost all the Stampin' Up! designer papers are, giving you lots of options. One side is very much the theme of the designer paper, and the other side's a bit more generic, so you can use it with all types of cards. The first thing I'm gonna do is corner round this, and I'm gonna be using the Detailed Trio Punch. One of my very favorite punches here in the studio because it does three things in one. It'll corner round with this one, create a beautiful decorative corner with this one. And then this hole here is perfect for ribbon. Lay it down on your work surface so that it'll work the best. And you're gonna see that there's two guides here, one on each side for you to be able to slide the paper in. So I'm gonna take the corner and slide it into the paper punch, press in the center and that will give you the perfect rounded corner. And I'll go ahead and do that now on all four sides. You'll be able to find all the products that I'm using today in my online store at lisasstampstudio.com. Also regarding this punch, you wanna make sure you come back next week and see my video to see a really neat way that I'll be using this for the next card layout I'll be teaching you. On the designer series paper, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the greeting. There are several greetings to choose from, from the Healing Hugs stamp set, and I've chosen the one that says, Sending You Healing Vibes. You'll find this stamp set in the current Stampin' Up! catalog, and if you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like a complimentary copy, I would be more than happy to send you one. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. To stamp the greeting, I'll be using Early Espresso Ink. I'll go ahead and I'll ink that up, and I'll stamp that here on the lower left side of my designer paper. I'm gonna push that off to the side. I'm gonna bring in my crumb cake cardstock. And this time I'm going to be creating a little bit of a background on a piece of very vanilla cardstock. And since I may go off the paper, I'm gonna protect my work surface with one of the small grid papers. From that same stamp set, there's the small cross hatch image. And I chose to do that in the same color as the card base, which again is crumb cake. I'll go ahead and I'll ink that up and I'm gonna stamp that randomly across the bottom. It's not important that it matches or lines up perfectly. I'll set that aside, and now I've got a scrap piece of very vanilla cardstock, and this is where I'm going to stamp my rose. And I'm gonna be using the Rococo Rose ink pad. This image is absolutely beautiful. It's what we call distinctive. It's a patent imaging format that Stampin' Up! uses to create a very realistic look. I'll ink that up in the Rococo Rose ink pad, and then I'll stamp that here. Apply lots of firm, even pressure so that you get a really nice image. Now, if your ink pad is too wet or too dry, you're gonna notice big variation in how this will appear. On the same scratch paper now, I'm gonna use Old Olive ink, and this time I've pulled out those beautiful distinctive leaves that are part of that stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp two sets of those. There is no die for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors. Now it's not difficult, so I'm gonna give you a couple tips along the way. Make your paper smaller so that it's easier for your hand. And then you're gonna leave a little bit of cardstock around the image. I never recommend cutting right on the stamped line because I don't know about you, but I can't cut straight. And if I cut on that stamped line, I have a habit of distorting the image because it loses its shape. So leave a little bit of cardstock and go all the way around. Now I'm gonna do this for the leaves as well as this rose. Now we're ready to put our card together. I've cut a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This measures four and a quarter by eight and a half. I have all the cutting dimensions down in the video description below if you are here from YouTube. I did score it right before you joined me and I'm using that bone folder for a nice crisp edge. Remember the designer series paper? That's gonna get mounted here in the center. To ensure I keep my work surface nice and clean, I like to use my silicone craft sheet. 
Adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it, which makes it wonderful for avoiding those sticky spots on your work surface. So I like to use it when I'm applying my adhesive. This is gonna go right in the middle and I'm gonna to try to leave a border of equal color all the way around. Remember the vanilla strip that we stamped? We're gonna go ahead and adhere that as well. Again, the cutting dimensions are all below for you. And make sure you stay with me. I've got two more cards using this exact same size and layout. This is gonna go right above the greeting and I'm gonna leave a little bit of cardstock on both ends. We've got our rose here. I'm gonna flip that upside down and I've got the two leaves. Now I'm gonna add dimensionals. So I'm gonna take a couple dimensionals, I'm gonna lay them here near the center of the rose. That's gonna allow me to slip those leaves down behind there so that doesn't impede the area that I'm gonna adhere them to. And then I'm gonna do the same with my leaves. I'm gonna remove the paper backing from my rose first. I'm gonna line this where I want it. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here exposed, wanting to make sure I don't cover up the greeting so that I have areas here that I can put the leaves in. And then with my leaves, I'll go ahead and I'll tuck one here near the top. Again, making sure that your leaves are gonna stay within the circumference of your card. And then my last set, I'll go ahead and tuck underneath here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my embellishments. This is the 2019-2021 in color faceted dots. Now you're probably wondering about the date and the word in color. Well, Stampin' Up! introduces new colors every year that are part of what we call our in color collection. These already have glue dots on the back, which make them very easy to use. So I'm gonna place one here and a smaller one here near the top, and I'll take one smaller one and I'll place that one here near the bottom. This take your pick tool is a wonderful thing. So I've got a paper piercing tool attachment. It dials out and it's got a small spatula. It also has a putty tip for picking up sequins and small pieces of cardstock. It also comes with another attachment you can dial in, which is a double-sided stylus tool. $10 cannot beat this and it includes a putty refill. You'll be able to find that in my online store as well. I promised you two other cards using this exact same layout and here's the next one. This uses the stamp set called Label Me Pretty and I just wrapped a little bit of silver metallic thread here. Use some beautiful rhinestones to pick up that silver. Very simple card. This is one of those cards you can make a lot of in no time. This is a coordinating punch to that stamp set. The last one is from the Broadway Birthday Stamp Set. Love this because it has coordinated dies, as you can see that I've used here to die cut those images. And I've used one of the greetings from that stamp set to create that very bold and subtle background. I would love to know which one of these cards is your favorite. Would you leave me a comment below? And while you're there, if you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.